Right, welcome along to Mood Changes Month. I am talking with Sara Southgate. Sara, do you want to just tell us a bit about what you do and how you do it? Yes, thank you, Emily. Uh, so I am a naturopath um, and as a naturopath, I have a very broad toolbox. So everything in naturopathy is underpinned by what you eat. Uh, but then we also take into account um, you know, lifestyle habits are a big part of what we teach. You know, one of the main principles of naturopathy is the body will heal itself. You just need to give it the right circumstances. So it's my job to help you give it the right circumstances. Um, and, you know, especially when we talk about the female reproductive system, because it is a system that is made to change and fluctuate throughout the month naturally, um, you know, it's working with it as opposed to imposing something upon it. Um, and, you know, herbal medicine is, is fabulous for that um, because it has some really special properties like, you know, one of the properties is amphoteric. Now, something that's amphoteric means it can upregulate or downregulate depending on what your body needs. Oh, wow. So it really works with your body. And that's what naturopathy is about, really. So it's finding the right way of eating, the right way of living and the right herbs to nudge you into what your body, into a healthy pattern, really, of being. Sounds um, good. And that's interesting yeah. what you said there. I mean, it's absolutely, we, we all, in an ideal world, would be learning to live with our cycle rather than fighting it, wouldn't we? Mm, yeah. I think that um, we are very divorced from our menstrual cycle. You know, you think back to, you know, when, when I would have been burnt at the stake for being a witch, um, which I definitely would have, um, you know, for, for using herbal medicine. That, that was the crime, basically. Um, women didn't, you know, there were lots of things they didn't do. They kind of just took a bit of time out for themselves when they were menstruating. Um, and we were much more in tune with the moon um, and how that affected us. And, and nowadays we are very much uh, expected to, a bit like the LEMSIP advert, you must go to work when you are really unwell. Um, you know, you must do everything and not take any notice of what your body is doing or what your body needs. Um, you know, and for many women, just tuning into when their cycle is actually and just actually going, it's my period. I'm going to not do everything. I'm just going to do the minimum that I need to do. That makes an enormous difference to the symptoms that they experience. 100% and when we when we tie that into mood changes I think what can feel really scary when you know when we start coming into perimenopause and we, we start experiencing much bigger changes of mood um, it can feel really scary if we don't if we aren't in tune with our body so it feels like we're being taken over doesn't it yeah yeah and and um, yeah it feels really irrational and then you start beating yourself up for that uh you know and um no it's it's horrid to feel just in the grip of something else and if you're if you are aware actually of what that might be it's much easier to just slow down and and go with it as opposed to fighting against it yeah 100 percent. so before we started recording you were talking about um a few bits on sort of the 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 way menopause is looked at and how it has been viewed let's go into that for a bit yeah it's it's really interesting so and and not just menopause but menstruation is viewed as unclean you know the curse it's the curse um so many negative associations with a premenstrual periods you know that that premenstrual time um you know because you're bad um in you know you're irritable you're moody you're this you're that and all those things are horrible things um, and, you know, the medical profession, there's a book um, called Feminine Forever. It's written in 1966 and it's very influential in orthodox circles. And it describes the menopause as a living decay, um, you know, where women become sexless caricatures of their former selves, the, the equivalent of a eunuch, unless they have estrogen. So unless you have synthetic estrogen, you know, you're just written off it's treated as a disease really and, and we wonder why we get quite angry at this time of life yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely so you know the menopause is a natural process 
Um, and I think it's, you know, I'm meeting more and more uh, menopause coaches who go into corporate, uh, you know, world and educate people, uh, which is great because women are now working in very big responsible jobs and managing the menopause. And for most of them, it is not something that they would even raise in the office, um, you know, because it's, well, I don't know because it's seen as weak or who knows what, but it is not a comfortable subject. Um, no. and, and so there is no give in this. Um, yeah, I think it'll be quite interesting to see um, what, uh, how people feel after lockdown, having not had to go into the office and pretend all the time to be okay. Um, one of the, uh, I do some corporate work and one of my HR managers said in the first lockdown, their sickness rate was down 85%. Go figure. Yeah, go figure. And it, you know, part of it might just be waking up feeling a bit like, oh, and, and thinking actually I don't have to, I, I don't have to face the tube today or the train, the commute. I can just work. That will be OK. But also the uh, rates of premature birth have gone down so much. And that's that's one of the, I mean, so significantly, one of the things that women are expected to to carry on as normal when you're pregnant and people work right up to having the baby, don't they? Yeah. Um, and it's it's such a strain on the body. Yeah, I mean, um, I noticed in the first lockdown that my cycle went normal for the first time in years. Oh, really? Yeah. Because there wasn't any of the external stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah. it's so interesting. So in, in traditional Chinese medicine, they say there's a direct channel between the heart and the uterus. Um, and um, that explains why people's psychological state affects their menstrual cycle. Um, and that of course is completely dismissed by, um, you know, the orthodox medical world, largely. Um, I don't wanna to make too many sweeping statements because I'm sure there are medics out there who recognize that, but largely, and I think often women dismiss it themselves as well. Um, yeah, so some authors have, have um, called the uterus the second heart. Um, you know, it's a really important organ. And, and for some people, you know, having a hysterectomy, for instance, is it, you know, emotionally, not just physiologically, it's a really big deal. Absolutely, because, I mean, going back to what you said earlier, I suppose if the, if the basic idea is that once you are no longer <laughs> reproductive, then you are past it and useless, yeah. then funnily enough, that ties in so much emotion to the uterus doesn't it yeah yeah it does it does um and it's you know it's yeah it's it's very easy as well i think i see a lot of women who've been told well there's nothing more we can do for you or you will just take it out um one of the very first uh women i worked with when i qualified um she, so back in 2003, she rang me up and she said, I've, I want some help with my hormones after my hysterectomy. And, um, and I was like, okay, well, uh, yes, we can do that. Come in and we'll take your case and we'll, you know, do everything. And, and actually, so she'd been recommended a hysterectomy because her bleeding was so heavy. Um, and I said, well, look, why don't we give it three months? And we'll see if we can sort out that bleeding so you don't have to have a hysterectomy. And she went, okay then. Um, and we did. And she never had to have a hysterectomy. Um, and herbal medicine saw her through the menopause really nicely um, without having to have surgery. Um, you know, so, so it's good. And it's, you know, mood month as well. Um, there are so many things that you can do herbally to support your mood um, you know there are herbs that are called thymoleptics which is the long technical word for mood lifters um, some that work uh, so one of the most common antidepressant herbs is st john's wort 
um, you have to be very careful with St. Just St. John's wort because it interacts with, it, it's one of the few herbs that interacts with lots of medications. Um, but there are herbs that are thiamoleptics that don't interact in the same way. Um, you know, so much of what I do as a naturopath is um, teach people how to switch off their stress response and therefore feel calmer, but also calm down the nervous system by using herbal medicine, which, you know, I always say to people, it's, it's not going to change what's happening in your life, but it will change the way you're coping with it. Um, and, and it does. They come back and they say, yeah, life hasn't really changed, but I'm coping much better. Um, and that's such a big thing with the mood changes. You know, um, yeah. I know personally, and I, you know, I see this day in, day out in the hub, um, when you don't understand what's going on and you don't feel like you're in control of your response, that's when it's terrifying. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, I spoke to a lady actually uh, yesterday. She had her first follow-up and she's come with... Uh, she's uh, in the perimenopause, she's highly stressed and highly anxious. And I said, how are you doing? She said, I'm so much better. I'm so much less stressed. She said, but Sarah, I knew from the minute we finished that first appointment, I knew I felt so much happier because I know we can fix this. Exactly. It, it was just being listened to and knowing that there's a plan and actually all these symptoms you're experiencing there is something that we can do about each of them. Um, yeah, so it's, um, it's just really important uh, to know what's out there for people. Absolutely. So presumably people can work with you direct or are you doing more sort of, I know you're moving towards doing more sort of group coaching than one-to-one, -one, but tell us a bit about how people can work with you. Uh, well, they can. So I work on, on programs. So when I'm doing a one-to-one, -one, so um our work will start with a 12 week program. So we'll meet weekly. Um, and um, that in, you know, herbal medicine is my mainstay, that and nutrition. So getting people to eat right, um, especially with mood because the blood sugar imbalances can really make you feel awful, just rubbish. Um, so that's the, it's just a profoundly effective and simple way to eat. So I teach that. Um, and give them herbs. And then I use a lot of mindset techniques. Um, I'm an NLP coach, which is um, really fabulous for actually accessing the unconscious mind, because that's, that's the part of your mind that's doing the day-to-day -day operations. Uh, that's the emotional primitive brain. Um, so when you know how to kind of tweak things in there, then you can really, it makes behavior change much, much easier. Um, so yeah, so I do a 12 week program, um, and, uh, that can be weekly or it can be monthly. Um, and then I also run groups, um, also which, so small groups, which also involve having herbal medicine as well, because that is, it is the key, um, for midlife and mood. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sarah. And also I have to comment, I'm very impressed that you've matched your jumper to my hair today. Well, I did plan it that way, Emily. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. Okay. You're welcome.